Now welcome, we're getting into the training right now. Now if you build your REI team in 90 days or less, I don't care if you've done a deal or not, you will feel a lot better about your business. A lot better. So the, the first section we're going to talk about title companies and then we're going to talk about real estate agents, then we're going to talk about appraisers, then we're going to talk about contractors and then other business contacts like insurance agents, and accountants, and attorneys, termite people, surveyors, things like that. The next second installment is going to be about money and banks and mortgage brokers, private lenders, partners, JV partners, things of that nature. And lastly, we're going to talk about investor contacts, investor associations, how do you work with other investors, creating buyers lists, locating other investors, and questions to ask investors. All right, you ready? Let's get started. Well, this is a very important mo uh, uh, section of the training. I want to introduce you to different people and contacts you'll be dealing with as a real estate investor. Now, you're going to learn how to locate the right people you need to be doing business with as well as how to recognize the people you don't want to do business with. Now, building this team or Rolodex as I call it is a large part of your success is going to depend on your ability to build this team. Now, every business needs suppliers to provide raw materials and employees to do the labor and customers to buy a product or a service. Same is true for being a real estate investor. You gotta know what real estate agents can supply you with deals, what investors have deals for sale, what appraisers are going to appraise your properties, almost guess what they're gonna appraise at within 2% or so, and what title companies you're going to use to close the deals on and so forth. Now you gotta know what contacts you need on your team. You gotta find them and how do you deal with them properly. Without this, your chances of success aren't very bright at all. So, let's get into this first section. You ready? Title companies. Title companies. First business contact. Now, by the words title company, we also mean a title agent or an escrow agent or a closing attorney. All of those are the same. And all these terms basically stand for the same thing. And that is a company that handles the closing statements, the purchase funds, and the recording of documents associated with the sale of a property. Now you've got to find a title company that understands real estate investors or you're dead. Don't bother. Very important that the title or escrow company you use deals with investors on a regular basis. You want a title company who understands what a double closing is, what a land trust is, what a hard money loan is and what a repair escrows are. Now get recommendations from other investors as to a good title or escrow company to use. You can also get recommendations from any real estate agents that deal specifically in REOs or bank owned properties. Now it's a good idea to ask other investors if there's any title companies that they would recommend that you stay away from, title companies that are bad. There are some title companies out there that totally do not understand the creative real estate investing and they can cause you some tremendous problems because of their ignorance. If a title company has caused a problem for an investor, that investor would most likely have no problem telling you all about it. Now title companies as a source of contacts, this is important, put a star by this. Title companies can also be a great source of finding contacts because they deal with everyone as part of their business. Most don't have a problem giving out a few basic names and phone numbers of people that are into investing. Their hope is that when you find a deal you'll bring your business back to their office to close. Understand though that not all title companies deal with doing closings for private lenders or for real estate investors. Therefore only a few select title companies will be able to help you. Alright, now I want you to listen very carefully. These are questions you can ask the title companies. Here's a few questions you'll want to ask when talking to title companies. You won't want to ask these questions to the first person who answers the phone. That's probably the secretary. The best person to talk to is the person who handles the closings. 
This is the person with experience that also deals one-on-one -on -one with people at the closing table. So they'll be able, so they'll be the one who can best answer these following questions. Are you ready? Number one. I'm looking to buy and sell some investment property. Do you deal much with investors? Listen. Number two. How often do you do double closings or simultaneous closings? And listen. Are you familiar with closing properties into a land trust? And listen. Number four. Do you know any real estate agents that deal in bank properties or REOs that you could refer me to? And listen. How about any large real estate investors that might have some deals for me to look at? Number six. Do you know if any of the local banks have a good non-owner occupied loan programs? You notice that's bank language. And they'll understand that. Number seven. Do you know any mortgage brokers who lend specifically to real estate investors? Listen. How about any private individuals who lend money? And number nine. Do you ever do any repair escrows escrows for private lenders loaning to investors? And if so, do, do you use your own escrow agreement or do you usually use an agreement provided by the private lender? Are there any additional charges to set up an escrow? And are there any charges for getting a disbursement? So those questions will help you with title companies. The next section after about a 10 second delay is going to be real estate agents. So important for your success. Thanks for listening to this recording about title companies. Next is real estate agents. Hey, welcome everybody. This is about real estate agents and building a team. Um, real estate agents, you know, before we start talking about them, let's define the difference between a realtor and just being a regular real estate agent. A real estate agent versus a realtor. Now, most people say that if you have a real estate license, you're automatically a realtor. Well, however, simply making a having a real estate license does not give a person the right to use what's called the realtor trademark. To be a realtor, the agent must sign up as a member with the NAR or National Association of Realtors and they have to pay dues. It's generally a thousand to two thousand a year. In today's world most people use the term realtor when referring to a real estate agents without any regard to whether or not the agent is actually a member of the Association of Realtors. Now let's talk about what is a buyer's broker versus a seller's broker. Now, when dealing with real estate agents, it's all also important to understand who's working for who. Now, most of the time, you'll be dealing with a seller's broker, or what we commonly refer to as a listing agent. Listing agent works for the seller. This is an agent who represents the seller's interest, such as in the case where the agent is listing a property for a bank, like an REO. Because the agent represents the seller, you won't always be able to get any personal guidance you might need nor will the agent be able to assist you in determining how much you should offer. But a buyer's broker and is an agent who represents the buyer and is assisting the buyer in purchasing the property. Now, for instance, this would be an agent who's providing you listings to look at and assisting you in submitting your offers to the seller's agent or listing agent. This agent is commonly referred to as the selling agent because they are the agent who is creating the sale with the buyer. The third type of agency relationship is called a transaction broker. And this type of agent does not represent the seller or the buyer, but is simply there to handle the transaction. This type of agency relationship is more and more popular because it limits the liability for the agent and also allows the agent to deal more evenly with all the parties involved in the sale. Now, understanding these brokerage commissions. A brokerage commission is the fee the agents charge to sell a property. And this brokerage fee is usually calculated as a percentage of the sales price, which is normally around 6% or so. The fee is usually paid by the seller at closing out of the seller's proceeds from the sale. 
six percent on a hundred thousand six thousand on three hundred thousand it's three times that on five hundred thousand it's five times six thousand or thirty thousand Now the commission splits can affect your offers. As a real estate investor, when you make offers, it's, it's important to consider how the agents split their commissions. For instance, let's assume you're making an offer on a property that's listed with an agent. Rather than making the offer through the listing agent, you can have your buyer's broker submit the offer. Under such an offer, the seller's agent would have to split their commission with your buyer's broker. Now let's say this, this is a very good deal just went on the market and there is another offer coming in at the same time for the same amount the same terms however because the seller is being submitted the offer is being sub submitted directly to the listing agent with no buyer's agent involved the listing agent would not have to split this commission that's six percent it's obvious that the listing agent would want the other offer to get accepted because the agent would make more money if your offer got accepted and even though the listing agent is supposed to submit both offers to the seller at the same time, that agent is going to try to find anything they can to make your offer look bad and the other offer look good because they're making more money. This could be as simply as telling the seller that they recommend that the other offer because the buyer is more reputable. Is that fair? Of course not. But it happens every day. It comes down to money and the listing agent wants to make as much as they can. The point is, as an investor, you want to submit your offers directly to the listing agent and never have a buyer's agent in the middle if you can avoid it. The listing agent won't have to split their commission check and you'll have a better chance of getting your offer accepted. Now, if you're a real estate agent yourself, you never want to touch the commission. You want to let the other agent know that even though you're licensed, you won't be collecting any of the commission on any of the deals that they send you. That way the agent will keep you at the top of their buyers list and won't be afraid to call you because they think you might take part of their commission. You also never want to try to negotiate with an agent for a discounted commission for the very same reason. The commission is small dollars compared to the actual deal and you always want to make sure that the agent never has a reason not to call you with a deal. Now let's talk about the MLS or the multiple listing service now. The real estate agents have what's usually called an MLS, which is uh, referred to as a multiple listing service. It's a normally controlled in one way or another by a local realtor association and is only accessible by realtors. Now, the MLS is basically a database of property listings. Each listing contains various information about a property that's for sale. Now, such information would include the property's address, the number of bedrooms, square footage, amenities, and so on, along with the listing agent's contact information. What's great about most MLS services is it can be searched using various parameters. For instance, as an investor, you might be interested in a search for vacant properties listed at a low price in an area you know other investors tend to buy in to build your buyer's list. Identifying the right real estate agent is so important. Because you want to make your offers directly to a listing agent, you must know how to find the agents that are listing the deals you want to make offers on. You also want to have an agent who has access to the MLS and is willing to work with you to find deals. Now, most professional real estate investors actually deal with several agents at one time. Some of the agents they deal with specialize in listing bank REO properties, while another agent might be constantly monitor the MLS for listings that meet the investors criteria. As a beginner, you too will want to deal with several agents at once. Therefore, you must understand how to work with each of them very well. So let's talk about agents who deal with bank foreclosures or REOs. There are real estate agents who only list bank owned properties and it's important you know all of those agents. The best way to figure out which agents deal solely in bank properties is to get a list of properties off the MLS with the words bank owned somewhere in the listing. If an agent has more than one bank uh, owned property listed on the MLS, it's a clear indication that they may have a regular inventory coming in. In any case, you want to stay in constant contact with all the agents that have bank listings. 
Usually the agent's contact information is on the MLS printout. If it's not, you can visit the property and get the contact information off the sign if there is a sign. Once you get on the agent's good side, many of them will even tell you of upcoming listings. You will want to look at these listings before the agent has a price. As soon as the agent has a price, you can immediately make the bank an offer because many of the agents let their best investors know about upcoming listings in advance. Many of these properties sell within a matter of days, very quickly. So what's an agent's farm area? You also want to keep an eye out for real estate agents who deal primarily in the neighborhoods in which you plan to buy properties. These neighborhoods are what agents refer to as their farm area. A farm area simply means that in the area which the agent works in, by working within certain neighborhoods, the real estate agent can better know the property values and the schools and the shopping centers and so on give them an edge over other real estate agents in the area. Therefore, you want to identify and work with agents who farm the neighborhoods in which you plan to invest in. Now here's the section where you talk about what do you say to agents and what do you not say to agents. When you locate an agent and talk to them for the first time, there's certain things they like to hear. What are they? Can you guess? First let them know that you will put up a reasonable earnest money deposit. If you have a cash partner or have access to hard money, let the agent know that you have access to money, that your offers have no contingencies, and that you can close very quickly. If you already bought a property through another agent, let the current agent you are talking to know that you have another agent as a reference. Now here's the next section that talks about what not to say to agents. Uh, new Real estate investors, they really make me laugh as far as what they say to agents to try to impress them. But don't say the following things, okay? Just don't say these. Don't call yourself a real estate investor. First, it's not a good idea to tell a real estate agent that you're a real estate investor. Some agents don't like investors and there's several reasons why. One reason could be that they got burned by an investor who said they could pay all cash and didn't close on a deal. Also, real estate agents hear people say that they are a real estate investor all the time. Therefore, it may be to the, your advantage to simply say that you're looking to buy some investment property and not refer to yourself specifically as a real estate investor. Never tell a real estate agent that you're trying to buy real estate using no down payment. And repeat that. Never tell a real estate agent that you're trying to buy real estate using no down payment. Most agents do not know or understand the creative techniques that we use as creative real estate investors and they've been conditioned to do real estate transactions in a very certain way. So if an agent feels that you're trying to do something off the wall, uh, you'll, they'll think that it won't work. Agents are looking for people who can close deals and get things done. So you don't want to look like a seminar graduate from a real estate investing course who cannot close. Now don't say this, don't say that you have cash. It's not necessarily a good idea to tell real estate agents that you're a cash buyer unless you have cash in the bank to back it up. It's better to let them know that you have cash partners. That way the cash liability shifts to someone else. If the agent asks you how much money you have to invest, tell them that you have partners with cash and it really depends on the actual deal. Rather than telling them how much money you have or have access to, tell them a certain price range that you're looking to invest in, perhaps like a range like 100 to 150,000. Offering a note as payment for the commission, don't do this. You should not be asking real estate agents to take part of their commission as a note. As a real estate investor, you'll probably never hear of or even meet an agent who's ever taken back their commission on a note. Agents don't want to be bothered with such an offer. So if you hear this technique somewhere, don't try it. Here's four basic questions, and just write these down, that you should ask when you're talking to a real estate agent. How often do you get bank property listings or REO listings? What areas do you usually list properties in? How often do you deal with investment buyers? 
and do you have any listings that might be a good deal that I could look at? So we're going to stop right here and the next section is going to be appraisers and how to deal with appraisers and what kind of appraisers there are. So in the next 10 seconds just wait and you'll be listening to our recording about appraisers. Thanks for listening so much about this particular section regarding real estate agents and realtors.